All right, welcome to the January 23rd, 2024 Aries Cloud Agent Python User Group Community Meeting. Lots to talk about on the agenda, um, number of status updates. There's a whole lot of stuff going on in the community. Um, talk about the next release and make plans for that. Occupy roadmap for 2024. And um, in, in doing the next release, we'll probably cover the PRs and issues. Um, as we get started, um, reminder, we're recording the call. So we'll be posting that. I'll be posting that after this. And um, reminder as well, since this is a Linux Foundation, Hyperledger Foundation meeting, the antitrust policy of the Linux Foundation is in effect, as is the Hyperledger Code of Conduct. Um, any announcements, any people that are new to the call that want to introduce themselves, and any requests for topics on the agenda? The mic is open for anyone to step up. Right. Um, Hyperledger annual reports are being available. I should have put the links in. We have draft reports, annual reports for Aries and OnCreds at Indy available and welcome input and um, contributions to those. And um, IIW is coming up in April. I believe it's the 16th, the 18th, I think. So um, if you are planning on going there, time to make make those plans. All right. Um, let's go down the various things that are in progress and see what we can do about status updates and who's available um, to give them. Ian, you're here on an OnCreds RS in Akapai. Do you want to talk about that briefly? Um, yeah, I guess we're working on the updates to add the endorser functionality, which is one of the gaps. Yeah. And um, there's a group that's starting work on the non-creds. I don't know what we're calling it, a non-creds W3C. Yeah, a non-creds in W3C format. Yeah. That's here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. That's, that's all underway. Good. Um, yeah, so um, do we still have that in non-creds branch and should we delete it? Uh, the branch is still there. Um, I, I, I think we can delete it at some yeah. point. Uh, it's nice to have just so okay. just, just in case there was something that I missed when we pulled the code over, but the yeah. branch is still there. So Jamie Hale's been working on the endorsement, and so that will um, be available soon. He got through the schema, so he's got one of them done, and then working through the next couple of object types. So that's good. Um, let's see. Um, did Peer and AFJ interrupt? Where are we? Uh, I noticed Daniel's not on the call, Daniel Bloom, unfortunately. So, um, but I can give a bit of an upgrade update on that. Um, did peer two and uh, four are in place. Um, there is ways to emit those. In other words, um, that when a Akapai agent is um, initiating a, a connection um, or, or actually I think in responding to as well, they can send a did peer two and, and or four, uh, depending on how you've configured your Akapai instance. Um, the thing that's missing, and we'll talk about it down here as far as, as um, handling DIDs is, uh, did peer one is supported, but we um, have too tight a constraint on the types of DIDs that are allowed. And so we've got a, a bug in there that we need to fix. Um, that's actually in a couple of places. So we need to do that. Um, Daniel was going to take a look at, um, he's got an environment for testing AFJ interrupt, and we'll see if we can get him to um, update that. So, um, but um, I know one of the issues is, is this too constrained did validation. So we're doing did validation in places and we're only, and we're not allowing did peers, for example, and, and we've got to eliminate that really quickly. So that's a big deal. Um, Next up, load generator testing. Um, we continue to do that at BC Gov using Aries Accreta. Um, looking good. So we were able to accomplish um, in a OpenShift environment a th a, a, about 
200 um, credentials issued per minute. So a thousand over a five minute span. Um, looks like when we go above that, we're hitting a few database issues. So we're gonna be, we will eventually look at those, but the thousand um, in five minutes or 200 a minute is sufficient for what we've got to do. Um, so um, we will produce, um, we're trying to formalize a report out of that. Um, we're now going to adapt um, the Aries Accreta script to do um, uh, to enable us to do an end-to-end -end test where instead of hitting an Akapai instance only or attraction instances we're doing right now, we would actually hit a controller that is hitting an Akapai instance. So stepping out beyond one step outside of that to enable a test and see how fast um, we can issue credentials where we're actually going end to end. I would point out that the low generator test we are doing with the um, 1,005 minutes does include, um, that's, that's a connection for every issuance. So there is a connection establishment happening plus the issuance. The credential we're issuing is a revocable credential, although we're not doing revocation as part of it, it is a revocable. And we are using a mediator in all of the interactions that are going from the traction instance to the um, load testing agents. So we're we're getting a pretty good test involved there and, and showing things running pretty nicely. Any questions or comments on that? I got a question, uh, Stephen. Just uh... You say about the mediator. Did you test a cluster, a cluster mediator, or just uh, uh, just one instance of the mediator? Um, we're using a mediator on um, the dev mediator we've got at BC Gov running on OpenShift, and so it's a I believe it's a multi uh, a multi mediator setup. Is that what you're wondering? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And and we did try it with and without the mediator, and there seemed to be no um, no difference. Again, we're still doing relatively informal tests and just sort of you know running things. Um, I would like to get to the point where we're we're you know really trying to formalize it. Oh, Wade tells me that it is single instance. Um, so we're not doing multi-instance mediator in that case, single instance. Okay. Oh, not yet. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, Patrick, do you want to give an update on the work you've been doing and um, the PR you've got in? Uh, yeah, sure. I can give a quick update. So. What you're referring to is the VCAPI endpoints, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm still working on, on this. I'm looking at uh, what's possible with the difference between the current models for the the VC manager and the sort of request that the endpoints for the VCAPI want to accept. So I'm uh, trying to find the how to make it all balance out. So these would basically extract the functionalities relating to JSON LD credential of the DITCOM issue credential V2 and proof presentation V2 protocol as sort of independent endpoints to carry the action. So you would have one endpoint to sign a credential, verify, prove, and store a credential. Uh, so that can uh, enable controller developers to uh, leverage these functionalities in, in other ways than through a DITCOM exchange. Uh, so right now I'm looking at uh, data validation and uh, returning uh, properly formatted error codes when there's a, a wrong payload that's sent, because at the moment it's just raised a validation error, and I'd like to be able to give a bit more descriptive uh, <laughs> returns. Yeah. Uh, I, had a, I had a meeting yesterday with the EM, so we were discussing the integration test. Most of the integration tests currently are... Uh, to test the DIDCOM protocols. 
Uh, and I think it would be interesting to, I'm not sure, I don't think I'll have time to put it in this PR, but eventually to do okay. integration tests for these endpoints. Yeah. To uh, take, you know, put a input on the issue credential and paste it on the verify credential and test the different uh, uh, proof suites that are available to Occupy. Uh, I believe there's two um, that are currently possible, the ED25519 and the BBLS signature. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Is there anything else uh, I should have covered with this? Uh... I, I don't think so. Um, I'm w one of the things I wanted you to do both was cover it and then, um, see if we can push on getting a review and an approval for this, if we're ready to go, it looks like you are happy with it. Um, yeah, and, I, 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 and, have and a little I bit of work I want to put in. Yeah. Uh, by the end of the week, I'd like to have this merge definitely. Okay. I just have like have one, one more you... push to put. Yeah. Okay. Um, but most of the endpoints are there. Like nothing's going to change with the endpoint. I just want to have a look at the the models for mostly for the the open API uh, interface and the how the the validation happens. Um, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, I'd really like to see this um, in there and completed as well. So hoping um, Ian and, and and Daniel Bloom are the primary re reviewers on this, I think. So, and and Daniel's had the most work in there. I don't know yeah, if um, you, you others did had, good comment to... Yeah, others have done any, but that would be good. Thank you, Patrick. Um, and Akif, um, wanted to give you a bit of time uh, on um, DRPC support, DRPC is DITCOM RPC. Um, BC Gov has a particular need for this that we want to put in, notably that we're going to be, that we're adding app attestation to the BC wallet and enabling that to occur. Currently, app attestation is implemented via um, just hijacking the basic message protocol and, and sending the data back and forth. Um, but it would be much better if there was a um, specific um, protocol in, to enable that, or, or uh, at least not basic message, because it it makes a mess of the user interface on the uh, on the wallet. So that's the idea of this: is we're adding DP, DRPC support. Um, it's not specifically for app attestation, but is a flexible interface that can be used for anything where. Akapai is basically just the messenger. It's passing things back and forth between um, between the controllers, essentially, of the two agents. So with that, Akif, uh, do you want to share? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. All right. So here we go. Um, so yeah, as Stephen mentioned, like this is the protocol that um, I'm implementing right now. So uh, basically what it is, is it's an agent message that wraps uh, the JSON RPC um, specification or, or an object. So over the last week, what I've been doing is implementing, based on my understanding of, of JSON RPC and how it's supposed to work, um, the different data models. So, uh, so I wrote up this sort of uh, wiki on, on my GitHub. Um, just outlining um, what the data models would look like. So the, I've implemented this JSON RPC request object, which will sit inside the DIDCOM RPC request. Um, and then the response and error objects are, again, specific JSON RPC objects that sit inside this DIDCOM response object. Um, <clears throat> and then I've just mapped out the different error codes. So um, I can show you, uh, so, what I've done is I've we've decided to implement the code as a plugin, so it's not directly in Akapai, but it'll be in the Aries Akapai plugin, so it's opt-in. Um, so effectively, uh, um, this is the code showing what the models look like. So here we have the the request the RPC request model, the response model, uh, the error models, and then these would be the sort of the messages that would wrap or that would contain those requests. So I was trying to look at um, examples of how everything has been implemented in previous protocols and plugins. And uh, it's kind of just going on uh, about this on, on my own understanding, but um, based on 
the specification here, which requires that there's some sort of state to be tracked between requests and responses uh, between the client and the server. Um, I just, I thought that perhaps maybe the request that these should uh, um, extend the base records since they're meant to be stored. I wasn't sure if that's exactly correct. So I'm hoping that when I pu push this code that somebody who's more, has more expertise or long-term expertise with Actify can tell me whether this is this is correct or not. So anyways, I've gone ahead and done that. Um, it's got validation completely built in. Um, I've also gone ahead and started writing up the, the routes and also the, the JSON objects that would um, the user would input into the route. So for now, there's two routes. There's a, there's a post um, endpoint to send a request to a, a server a agent and then a response endpoint from the server back to the client. So I have a, I have a local Occupy instance running or the plugin running and I can show you what th those endpoints look like here. So as I mentioned, there's the there's a precondition that the the connections know each other. So what I've done is I've added the connection ID as a parameter here. It's a required parameter. Um, so essentially, what it is is you would establish your connections, and then you could send a DRPC request or a response. So as you can see here, um, the request basically is just an object um, that has to conform to a JSON RPC object. So uh, this all has validation built in. So this is a valid message, but if I, for example, um, remove a required parameter, you can see that right away you'll get the 422 back. So you'll get all the relevant uh, messaging back to tell you what's wrong with your request or response. Uh, the cool thing is, is this also, the request can be an array or it can be an object. So you can have multiple requests at the same time and it'll be valid. Um, and then this is the example response back. So I guess the other question based on what the RFC says is it needs to have an ID, a type. I've added the connection ID in there. Um, and then this would be what the, sorry, the request. So when a user makes a, a request, this is what they would get back. They'd basically create a message that would then be sent off to the server. So inside that, there would be like what the request was that they, the JSON RPC request that they made, um, which connection it was, the ID, the type, and then there would be a state associated with it. So for that, um, if you look at the, uh, the request. So what I've done is I've taken uh, agent message schema and I've extended it with the DRPC request record. And that's where I'm getting this sort of structure that looks like this. Now, I don't know if that's correct. Again, I'm, I'm basing it on what's in the specification and other examples I've seen is that, uh, this, oops, this object is usually nested within the agent message, but I've extended it so that it's at the same level, so to speak. So, um, yeah, anyways, I have all of this kind of written up. The Basically, the next steps is essentially um, being able to post the message, store it, uh, receive it on the other end with the handler, and then the um, controller would be notified, I guess, through a webhook. So that's all really straightforward. I don't anticipate that that's going to be a problem. And then writing um, the integration test between the two agents. So, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick update that it, this is coming along. I think I probably will be done this within, I don't think it'll take more than a day or so just to finish up the rest of the, the bulk of this. It was, most of it was just figuring out um, what objects to use and uh, the validation behind it. So a lot of it, it's all majority completed in that regard. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, you have a question? Yeah. Um... I can relate to trying to understand specs. It's uh, it's not always easy. Uh, do you know? Have you found like any other implementation of this or any sort of 
way to uh, validate the work once yeah. it, once it's working like with itself like to validate against other implementation is there like any leads for that yeah so i what i did is i followed a blend of the basic message protocol and the action menu protocol i think those are kind of basic message is way a lot more simplified so it's not really useful in the sense that there's no request response in that protocol but then action menu has components of a request response Again, they use, uh, I think they use base record as well, but they might use base model. And then I didn't want to go so far as to use a, uh, an exchange record because I don't think this requires that. But again, um, if anybody here who's an expert with the, the code could maybe let me know whether I'm on the right track. So um, in terms of validating whether this will work, I think um, I've written actually a ton of unit tests for actually validating the message because that's majority of the protocol is this, that the the objects and the requests and the responses conform correctly. So error, um, error objects have to be of a certain type. They have to have a null ID, for example, they have to have a code and an error message. The request and response messages have to conform to a specific uh, um, structure. The so majority of the work has been just making sure that validation is correct. So I think right now uh, I was sitting at 100% unit test coverage and then I wrote up the routes and that dropped it. So I'll beef that back up to 100%. And then the next, uh, most of the other work will be like just making sure the integration test works. So if I send a request that I get the relevant response back, if I send a bad request that I get, um, you know, an error back. Interesting. Like when you say the, these errors, you mean like the uh, the when you send a post request, like validating the request that was sent? Yeah. So for example, um, you know, like I said, if um, let's say for example, uh, you know, I take out this yeah. JSON RPC, which is required in the in the request uh, object JSON yeah. RPC object. So I just want to make sure that I'm going to get this four two two back, and it tells me that you know I'm I'm missing yeah. data. So that's all built into yeah, the yeah, unit yeah. test. Yeah, um, that's so interesting. For... It's similar to what I, I'm I was saying, like validating the requests on the, the VC API. Like it'd be nice to have a way to uh, uh you know handle all the errors and on a common common pattern and return like clearly like this is the error code, this is the message, okay. and so on. And I was looking at the AIO HTTP catcher module, which is a sort mm -hmm. of middleware to handle all errors. And uh but I yeah, maybe we could uh, connect on that and discuss like your approach for that. Uh, I'd be curious. So, to... Yeah. So for sure, I think the main, I'm actually relying on Marshmallow. Uh, so yeah. Marshmallow has all the validation that it does. And then based on that, like the error response that's returning is, is directly from that um, package. So I actually haven't implemented any error handling in the route yet. It basically uh, it's, it's this AIO, HTTP spec and Marshmallow. Uh, so yeah. actually, let me. It's what I'm looking at too. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, what happens is um, the request schema and the response schema are basically the ones that are doing the validation. So if the request schema doesn't conform to the right structure, then this automatically will return errors. So as you can see, like the request schema requires this request, and all of this has got, uh, it's already yeah. got validation built in. So, you know, it has to have. Uh, a specific structure in it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, uh, I'm on the same. Uh, I'm, I'm also <laughs> playing with the marshmallow, marshmallow schemas, yeah. and I'm looking yeah. at this now. So. Maybe what I, I'll do is I'll post this uh, as a draft PR, and then you have it as a reference, and then we can also uh, chat over Discord. I mean, yeah, uh, that'll be really That'd useful be to have somebody we can bounce ideas off each other. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like, uh, again, if, if anybody's on this call that is specifically an expert on like building out protocols and stuff, whether this is correct, like I've never seen any examples of anyone actually extending agent message schema with a specific, uh, schema of their own, but that's what I did. Uh, <laughs> okay. and I, yeah, so that, that I, I think. Like I said, I'll have a more comprehensive update and hopefully a demonstration soon of this. So, excellent. Yeah, I think doing a, a a PR is always good. Just flag it as you know draft, 
yeah. the, the draft setting in GitHub and and um, then at least people can take a look and and start to give you feedback easier. Yeah, sounds good. Excellent. All right, right. thank you. Yep. Yeah, action menu really is should be the one that's the closest. It's very similar what what we're trying to accomplish with it. Oh, look at that. My new mute button worked nicely when the coffee machine went off. Okay. Um, okay. Any other status updates? Anyone else um, wants to talk about work in progress that they've got going? There's a lot going on. Okay. Oh, Sheldon. Yes. I just wanted to back up a bit to the did peer stuff. So in... Yeah. in um... Aries agent test harness. There is now a full suite that will that will uh, test interrupt uh, between uh, frameworks for bearded one through four. Uh, of course, that's only working right now with uh, Akapai with bearded one or sorry bearded one and or bearded two, two and four. And four. Yeah. yeah, like you said. Um, so the next step is to we want AFJ to work. Uh, to play nice in this uh, new suite of tests. So there's some work there uh, that we could use some help with in the community if if anybody wanted to do that. So we have to upgrade the, the AFJ back channel controller uh, for did exchange and out of band. Um, so any, any help there might, might be appreciated. Um, and all this is getting ready to also do the uh, did rotate uh, tests in yeah. the future. And then- interrupt, so. And Sheldon, I think you also need that ability that you've got in Akapai to to restart in the middle. Yes, to, which which is which is there now working. Uh, I don't okay. know. How, obviously, that's going to be uh, different for um, every framework. Yeah, so exactly. That's okay. going to be on a case case by case basis. So that that'll also have to be done properly for AFJ. Uh, AFJ actually can restart, but it only takes the transport protocols as reset settings. It has okay. to be able to take uh, a bunch of other stuff as well. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay, next up is the next release. Um, I think we're ready for a new release. Um, we have 53 PRs since we last released. So 011 came out um, the 24th of November. So these are the 54 things. So I think we're um, definitely ready for a new release. Um, some of these are some of these will be dropped off because they're things that were in the and on creds two branch and things like that. But we'll see. I'll go through and and figure out all of the things we need. Um, the thing I was wanted to raise with the community, and I don't know if, if people have opinions. Um, do we call it either eleven one or twelve zero, depending on whether there's breaking changes? And there probably are breaking changes, but I'm not sure right now. Um, or do we call it, is it time to go to 1.0? Um, we did do that failed attempt at, at calling things 1.0 a year ago and then backed off because we didn't feel we were far enough with the AIP2 support. Um, somebody in the community raised the question about what we had in AIP2 and what we were missing. Um, the only thing we're now missing is some DIDCOM V2 support and um, please act. I'm not even sure what this, uh, we'd have to check what this is. Um, this is, is very low level. Um, so we need to look at that. But there was used to be a bunch of things in here and now we're down to pretty well nothing. Um, please act will not be done um, and, and will likely be removed from AIP2 since no one's done it and it's um, super hard to do. Um, doesn't really make sense to do. So um, if if the bar for 1.0 was AIP2 support, then then I think we've got there. Um, any comments from anyone? 
um, on that. This is where marketing would be a huge help because I just keep incrementing the number. <laughs> um, my gut feeling is to go for 0 0.12, but it's just my my okay. little opinion. Yeah. I mean, the other way to go is 0 0.12 and then immediately do a 1.0 as what amounts to 0 0.12. And then we don't risk the mess I got into last time I tried to go to 1.0 without knowing the future. Okay, that's good logic is is to say 0 12. And then because there's so many things in it, and then we simply declare that um, after 0 12 is 1.0. Yeah, I, I would say 0 12. And after that 1.0, I feel like there's a lot of new features added. So they should be released and yeah. waited a little bit. And if everything is well, then go to 1.0, like. Good note, good logic. Okay, I like that thinking. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a 0, 012 0 RC0 0 as soon as I can. So I'll put that on my list to do and get that release out the door. Um, it will, of course, be an RC0 or a release candidate. We won't just go directly. Um, the things that I want to get in this release, um, this did validation. I think these are really easy ones, but I'd really like to get these done because they they're they're just painful. So 2714 was where um we actually are able to do um we're able to do uh, a connection with a did peer two, but then we fail on credential request because of a um because the holder did is being checked. And the, the holder did should not even be checked at all. So um, that one just is a pretty simple, um, should be just a, a really quick change. The next one is 2610, where we receive a did peer one. And we say, oh, we don't like did peer one, even though we can process it and handle it. So um, again, it's just a matter that our did checks have, are not being updated as we um update code in Akapai as we add features so those two definitely to be done would be very good to see did rotation completed um this has been on our list for a bit but we just haven't um the person working on it just hasn't uh, been pulled in other directions so did rotate um there's a pr there's an issue for it and then a pr that it's partially done that daniel bloom did and then uh, we were going to take it over but just haven't had the resources to do that yet and then um, the PR we talked about earlier from Patrick that I'd like to get in place for this one. Um, any other PRs or or um, issues, capabilities we'd like to see in a new release immediately? Uh, there's a pendant thing for me. It's very minor. It's just to update the PyDid package. So we, me and Daniel did a, a new release for just a okay. small validation on the documents, like a service type to enable lists. Yeah. So Arrays, need... yeah, lists, yeah. yeah. Just need to raise by 0.1. Uh, okay, there is was... there an issue for this already? Yes, yes, there is. Just need to to do a PR for it. Okay. Uh, the, pack let... the package is released, just need to, yeah. If you wanna look up while you're on the call what the issue is, let me know. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I can give you the number. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there was another issue. Uh, this is relating the traceability stuff. For, so how the verification goes to fetch the, like the verification endpoint goes to fetch the verification method uh, for did web verification method specifically. There's a, it currently used a PyLD library and tries to frame the verification method ID. And there's a, some kind of bug with a specific context. So right. I wanted to get a small PR in 
in the case of did web verification method to go fetch the the verification key in the in an alternate way uh, until that error is resolved. Okay, and that's the one where yeah the the workaround yeah. PR until um, yeah yes. okay good so yeah in, instead we talked of framing, about that. Yeah, instead of framing, it's just resolving the did document and go find that ID manually with the a, a Python. And, and uh, you're the one that knows that one, so you're going to do that one, right? Yeah, I will. Uh, we'll give it a good shot. Um, good. <laughs> Thank you. I just need to find a way to to resolve the did. I just need to look a bit uh, the resolver endpoint how they they resolve. Like the functionality is there. I just need to to bring it to that endpoint. So. Okay. Uh, and another thing that was put in is just add support to register uh, uh, did web. It doesn't do anything, but it's it's a way you can all use web as the when you register did in your wallet. I would like to explore in the future if you register did web to also register along with it um, verification method ID. Uh, like statically, so you wouldn't have to provide it to your issuance endpoints. Because currently, if you issue with a did web, you need to provide the verification method in the options field. And it would be best if uh, Akapai could know, like uh, for a ver ver if you register did web, there would be a default verification method associated with it. Uh, but that's a, a maybe. Uh, it would be like a, a nice to see. Um, but this would okay. definitely I, be I definitely don't understand that one. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll leave uh how about that? Yeah, that's <laughs> uh, that sounds good. Okay. Any others? Excellent. Okay. So action item is um, good. Um, okay, next up, um, Aries Cloud Agent Roadmap. So. Um, as mentioned last time, um, we have to, uh, each of the projects in Hyperledger have to this quarter produce not a, a quarterly report, an annual report. And there's a process for it. Um, there's a, a new template that we use for an annual report. So that needs to be done. Um, I've gone ahead and written drafts of the various annual reports. So anyone who's been on either a, an Aries, an Indy, or an Anoncreds meeting has seen these. Um, various things in here, definitely looking for input on this. I don't want, um, you know, I wanna make sure I'm capturing the goals of the community. Um, the goals for the Aries um, report were very explicitly discussed in the Aries working group call from, uh, I believe two weeks ago um, that Sam led and it did go over these things. So this is, um, these goals do have um, community um, feedback and, and um, information uh, in. So um, from an Akapai perspective, I just sort of wrote things in here that were, um, from that list, but applicable to Akapai in particular. So um, the current work above, um, basically everything that's kind of in process, those were mentioned in that in the um, ARIES report and are obviously extremely relevant to Akapai. So let's get those um, completed. Did rotate leading to DIDCOM v2 and or whatever happens with the trust over IP trust spanning layer. So um, those um, did web S is something that um, we think is important, but we're a little concerned about the direction did web S is going. Um, it, it does seem to be overly complicated and the introduction of carry is going further than, than certainly we had expected or wanted, but um, 
Ideally, at some point this year, we get a registrar of a did web S did and a resolver for it. So a way that a Akapai agent just like it can create a um, uh, an indie did, it can create and register a did web S did. So manage the keys within Akapai, but um, publish it via a registrar and then um, a resolver. Resolvers, well, fairly easy, although it would need a dependency on the carry, uh, some of the carry work. Um, obviously, we always want to have better documentation tools and webinars. Um, in particular, I wanted to highlight the scalability report, which was um, coming, we want to come out of the load test generator. And then um, using Aquapy beyond did common and on cred. So um, some of the work that um, Patrick was talking about as far as the traceability suite, the SD Jots work that Char did, um, the um, open ID for VCs that Indicio has done, and so on. So those um, type of things. Um, release 1.0 and LTS, I think, is, is a big goal that um, I think the Akapai community wants to have. And then others would be um, looking at other uh, VC types, uh, MDL probably being the most important one that we haven't touched yet, really. Um, and and so looking at what it would take, um, expanding the credential exchange protocols, which ties into the open ID for VC support, and um, potentially other ones that are uh, are around. Any other items that um, those that deploy and use Akapai think are missing from this list or should be moved around, anything that should be dropped from this list or, or de-emphasized? All right, cool. All right, I do encourage you to look at the um, draft annual report. I guess I could um, copy the clean link and put it into the chat if I could find the chat, but that doesn't seem to be possible. There we go. Um, Aries and Uala report, close enough. Um, good. Any other topics? Um, I think we've done PRs. Um, PRs ready for review, I guess we should look into. Um, Ian, this is ready to go? Yes, that one's ready to go. Okay, so let's get this one done. Um, I'll make sure we've got reviewers on that. I'm not sure why it's got Max next to it. I'll take a look at that. Yeah. Um, an on-cred schema changes requested. I believe Daniel's requested some changes in here. So and they might have already been done. I'm not sure Jamie's status on that, but we'll see. Um, Patrick's, this will be merged soon, which is the updates to um, the design of the and on preds in W3C VC format. Good. And then these again have an X on them. Um, presumably the documentation is pretty straightforward, but let's see if we can. I'll take a look at after this call as to why there's an X on that. It seems documentation is unlikely to have testing problems. Good. Any other topics for today's meeting? I'm surprised how quickly we've gotten through this. Excellent. Okay. Well, with that, we'll wrap up and move on with the day. Thanks all for joining, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. Take care.